Hey everyone, welcome to this AutoCAD tutorial on how to create an intermediate level isometric. We're going to be drawing this object over here, so let's go ahead and get started. I'd like you to open up a new AutoCAD file, drawing file, and once you've done that, I'd like you to click on the little hyphen here, go over to viewpoint configuration, and select the three left option. When you do so, it's going to cut your screen into three portions and we are going to be drawing this in each of those portions. So to start, we're going to be on the front and we're going to draw out this L over here. So I'm going to adjust this to my front view by clicking on top, going to front, and now drawing that out starting with the top line. So use the polyline command, P line, enter, and I'm going to draw out a line. And if it's not moving, if it's moving freely like this, your ortho mode is not on. So make sure you click it on so that you're moving in 90 degree angles. And I'm going to type in 1.12, enter. Then I'm going to go down a total of 3, enter. Then to the side, a total of 2.88, enter. Then I'm going to go up a total of 1.31, enter. And then I'm going to press escape a few times and use the line tool, enter. And starting from the top here, I'm going to go down a total of 1.31 units, like so. Now, I'm going to press escape a few times just to show you here why I did it like this. Uh, because right now, we don't know how much that angle is. And we can calculate it. Or, if we drew out every other single straight line, there's only one possible solution for the angled line. So now I can just use the line command and just connect these two points together and I know it's the correct line. Okay let's join everything together using the join command enter and select one line press enter and then select the entire object and press enter and it's going to merge everything into a single polyline. So now you can extrude out this object and that's what we're going to do next. On this view over here we're going to change it from top over to a southwest isometric you can kind of see what it looks like. It's looking really nice. And maybe we can do better with a northwest. Let me just see the three different views we have. Let's try a northeast and then a southeast. Yeah, I like the southeast the most. So I'm going to leave it as a southeast because it matches this image. Okay, and let's go ahead and extrude it out. So on this view over here, I'm going to use the extrude command. Enter. Select the object. Enter. And I'm going to extrude this a total of three units. Enter. So it looks something like that. Okay, so things are looking good right now. Uh, we need to next draw out this little box over here. And that's actually a little bit ways away from the corner that we currently have. So it's actually the difference between 4.38 and 2.88. And if you do the math, it's actually 1.5. So on our ISO view, I'd like you to use the line command to draw a line from this corner out a total of 1.5 units. Enter. So it's going to look something like that. That's going to be our reference corner. And now I need to be facing the front of this object, which in our case happens to be the right. So on this third view here, I'm going to switch over to a right view. And just to prove that it's the front, I'm going to rotate it so you can kind of see that we are looking at the front, even though it says top here. And then on this view, I'm going to type in polyline, enter. But I'm going to start drawing on this view. I'm going to click at this corner. And the reason I don't click on it from here is because sometimes AutoCAD will pick up one of the other corners because there's actually two other corners they can select from. And if you want to draw it the correct way, you need to make sure you're on the right corner. So I click there, but now I'm going to go back here to draw. So I'm going to go up a total of one unit, enter. Now I'm going to go this way, and you can see the isometric, how it's forming. 1.5, enter. Then I'm going to go down, 1, enter. And then I'm going to go back to the corner. And you could actually even go here and just click on that, because now it's actually made. And we've now created that, that profile that we needed. Now let's go ahead and aloft these two together, and that's going to create this nice profile over here. To do that, what I'd recommend doing is using the command called X edges, enter. And while holding down control, 
click on each of these lines. That's going to allow you to copy them because right now we, we there's no lines here, so they don't exist. And when you press Enter, it's created a set of lines over there. Now we're going to take out this isometric by going to Layer Properties, right-click here, and we're going to create a new layer called ISO 1, let's say. And I'm going to just associate this with a color, let's say pink. Hit OK. Close out of it. And then while having the object selected, I'm going to switch that over to ISO 1. And then I'm going to turn off that layer. So you can see what we're left with are these two. The X edges aren't a polyline yet, so use the join command. But make sure you delete this line here first. Then I'm just going to adjust the screen just a hair. And I'm going to use the join command, enter, and to select the entire object. Press enter. And hopefully, if you did it correctly, it should have merged them all together. Perfect. I'm going to move that a little bit back. OK, let's try lofting these together. I'm going to use the loft command. Whoops. Loft, enter. And then all you really need to do is select the objects you want to loft, and then press enter. And it should have fused them together. Press enter twice. So there we go. We have that part. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the other portion now. And you can see right away that it's looking pretty good. OK, and we can also go ahead and convert this to a pink layer. OK, well, next, let's go ahead and put that hole in the back. We need to first adjust this view over here from the right over to the left, because the left is where the back is facing. And then I'm going to adjust this one slightly isometrically again. And on this view, go ahead and use the line tool to start, enter. And we're going to go over here to select a point and go down a line. And we got to go the distance that we want not to cut out. And that is going to be 0.75. So I'm going to say 0.75, enter. And then I'm going to go down a total of 1.31 units. 31 units, enter. I'm going to go out a total of 1.5 units, enter. Go up a total of 1.31 units. Whoops. And you can notice right away that we had an issue snapping there. So I'm going to go ahead, delete the line. And that's kind of why we draw here. I was trying to save some time, enter. But now I'm going to go back here, select that point. And now going up, type in 1.31, enter. And then lastly, connect it to that line over there. So this is the cut we need. I'm going to turn off the pink layer. So you can see what we're left with. I'm going to delete this line. That was just there to help us uh, with the positioning. But now we can go ahead and join these together. So use the join command, enter, select that, enter. And now that they're joined together, we're going to use the extrude command once more. So extrude, enter, select that object. And we're going to extrude it out a total of 1.12 units. Let me look, yep, yeah, 1.12. And I'm getting that from this measurement over here. And I'm going to turn back on ISO 1 so we can see the entire object. And now we're going to subtract these two extrusions. So go to Subtract, Enter. And Subtraction works by selecting the bigger one, Enter, and then subtracting the small thing inside, Enter. So if you do that correctly, you're going to notice that we created that cut inside. And now that we have have that done, let's go ahead and add in these two different circles to wrap this up. On this front view over here, let's start with the larger of the two circles. And I would like you to select this area, then use the line tool, enter, and then head over to the ISO view. And I want you to click on that corner and then back over here. And we're going to go down a total of 0.62 units. 0.62, enter. And then I'm going to go out or I want to go out in this direction, but it doesn't seem to be letting me. So I'm going to go back here. That's fine. Type in line, enter. Whoops. Yeah. Line, enter. 
then back here, I'm going to select that point we just drew, and go out this way, and back here, this has to be in the center, so that's 0.5, enter, and I just did that to create that line that I need to create this circle. So now in our front, we can actually draw out that circle, it's 0.62 in diameter, so use the circle command, enter, and right over there, we're going to be drawing out the diameter, I believe, so press D for diameter, press enter, and then type in 0.62, enter and if you did so you'll notice that the circle is in place and it's looking really good and then we are also going to create that smaller circle which has a 0.36 diameter and let's just go ahead and create it exactly where we did like right here so go to circle enter whoops I meant to be on this view circle enter and right here we're gonna draw in that 0.36 circle and type in D first, of course, and then type in 0.36, enter. And you might be wondering why we're drawing it there when it's actually supposed to be here. Well, that's just because we're going to move it. So on your isometric view, go over to move, enter. Click that circle, enter. And then we're going to specify, we're going to move it from that corner over to that corner. And now you'll notice that both circles are in place. And let's go ahead and turn off our ISO layer, delete these lines, and then extrude out each of these circles. So I'm going to start with this one, enter, and I just need to extrude this one out a total of 0.75 units, as well as the other one. I need to extrude that one out 0.75 units. Now with those extruded, I'm going to turn my ISO back on, and then use the subtract command enter to select the big enter from the small enter to cut that out and then the big enter from the small enter okay so if you did that correctly and we switch over to our shaded view isn't that we've been in wireframe this whole time you're going to notice that we've created the isometric on the screen i think a more gray color would be better Okay, so there you go. Whoops. And I'm going to switch back over to our single view. There you go. And there you go. Isometrics complete. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. And if you want to do more isometrics, I will see you later. Peace.